Pinterest. Pinterest is uh, a visual bookmarking site, basically, and uh, it's all gra it's all graphics. It's like 70% female, uh, but it's just blowing up. And it, the reason why is because it's visually oriented. Visual com visual information is really easy to consume. You just look at it, you know, you understand it. Um, and what and what you do is you you have boards, pin boards, that you take images that you like and you pin them to them. So you save them for later. And the way that people are using this is uh, they're saving recipes, uh, but they're also saving music-related content. There you can uh, you can uh, pin videos. Um, that type of site. The one that is really easy to use is focused on visual communications. I think is is uh, where you should uh, take a look because nobody has any more time. Our attention spans are zero, and so the easier you can make it for people to consume your content, the better. Yes. Okay. So Google, Google, and Facebook are not doing this in partnership. Uh, to be clear, uh, they're in competition. Uh, but Facebook, when you look, you think about Facebook. Um, the great thing about about online marketing is people declare themselves by all of their acts online, by what they search for, by the things they like, the the content they press like on, the things they comment on. With every act like that, they're declaring themselves and building up a basically a profile of what you are as a person. Uh, so your Facebook page, the things that you like, the things that you share through your Facebook page, all of that is demographic and psychographic information that Facebook uses to understand what you like and what content you would like to see. Uh, specifically for their advertising, to target their advertising very precisely. Uh, Google does the same thing with your search behavior. Um, so they will, based on your search patterns, uh, take an educated guess as to what type of content you want to see, um, and they're usually really, really good at it. The other thing they're doing is they're incorporating social content into your search. So. Um, with Google Plus, uh, you set up your profile on Google Plus and you attach your Twitter account to it, you attach your Facebook account to it, you attach all your social accounts to it. It knows then what your network is. It knows who you are connected to in social. And based on that, it will take the content that people in your network are sharing and fold that content into the results of your search. So when you search, you're going to see stuff, I, I could see stuff from, that you've shared. And uh, I'm more likely to pay attention to stuff that you'd share because I know you, and I trust you know your your judgment, and so I'm probably going to be more likely to um, to uh, click on that that content. So building up uh, your search network, your your social networks are important for search as well. Well, I no, I don't. I mean, people people are giving the info. You don't have to give them the information. To use the sites, you do, but you know you're making the choice of whether whether you want to give them that information or not. Um, from from my experience, it it does improve the quality of the results. The problem with it, um, it's not an ethical problem, but it's a it's sort of a social problem. Is we're about, we're able to filter out content that that there's no serendipity anymore. You don't run across stuff because of all the filters. And so if you don't want to hear a particular point of view, you don't have to hear it. And there's a lot of value in being exposed to different points of view, especially ones that you disagree with. I have a bunch of blogs. Uh, E-strategyblog.com is where I share my general marketing uh, content. Uh, I'm on Twitter at D. Erickson, uh, and I have a uh, music marketing blog at audiolicious.tv. So those are the main places you can find me. If you waste away your days.